Hello dear friends, this is your old Humphreys and I'm glad to be with you to share with you a word today from the Word of God. And this is a simple message, about a 10 minute message that I bring to you and uh, it's entitled, you, uh, you Become What You Say. Uh, the way you talk is very important. The words that you use are very important because the Bible says you actually become what you say. And so it's important that we say the right things, that we first say the right things to God and ask the Lord to forgive us and ask Jesus to come into our hearts and we become Christians. And that means that we shall have what we say. We become a child of God. And we need to know and understand that that's a truth and it extends through the ages. And I want you to ask God to forgive you and ask Jesus to come into your heart and let him be the Lord of your life. And when you do that, you become a child of God and you'll never be, oh, praise God, you'll never be lost. You will be saved from hell. You will be on your way to heaven. And down here, you're going to get through. I want you to notice, first of all, that you have what you say, according to the Bible. In Proverbs, the 16th chapter, in verse 24, it says, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. And so the right kind of words strengthen the soul and it helps you physically some way that I do not understand. The Bible said is health to your bones, the words you say. And so it means that when you talk right and say the right thing and talk of the words that are true and pure as God has ordained it, that is good for your health. And so try to remember this word. Well, Proverbs, the, the 16th chapter, and that is pleasant words. Make your words pleasant. Instead of condemning and harsh and, and, and judgmental, make them pleasant. Pleasant words are as sweet as a honeycomb, and they are sweet to the taste and to the soul, and they are health to the bones, and that becomes important, very important. Over in Proverbs, in the 23rd chapter, verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Now here again, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And as he thinks, he speaks, and he becomes what he says. And Jesus said, this is important. You become what you say. So be sure that you're trying to say the right things. Be careful about condemning others. Be careful about judgmental. Be careful about things that are wrong and and displeasing to God. But be careful about making light of that which is sacred, about joking about hell, and about joking about the Bible, and about joking about the devil. These things are wrong and displeasing to God. So learn to speak truth as best you can. And those words will help you become what you ought to be. And so God says that they will be good for you. And as you think on these things, so you become more and more of what God would have you to be as you speak. And I pray God will help you to speak the truth. I, uh, I'll turn over here to the book of Ephesians in the first chapter. It says we should, pray, we should praise the glory of God who has made us accepted in the Beloved. You see, when you accepted Christ as your Lord, then God accepted you in Christ, in His Beloved. You're accepted before God. You're received as His child. You're born again and you belong to God. And when you're born again, then you belong to Him forever. And you'll always be His and you'll go on with Him. In Christ we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of His sins, according to the riches of His grace. Praise the Lord. We have been saved by God. We have redemption through His blood. You see, Jesus shed His blood for you. The Bible says over in Leviticus that without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. This is something God ordained. That blood had to be shed. Somebody had to give their life. Jesus came down from heaven. The only one that could possibly give His life and make us to become saved and redeemed by the blood. And he went to the cross and shed that blood so that we could be saved forever, praise God. And so we need to see this truth and to recognize it 
and to begin to speak it, to say, I'm redeemed by the blood. I am saved by grace. I am a child of God. I have a home in heaven, and I have Christ within me. This is what the Bible says. And so you're to say the same thing. And as you speak, so it will be. And so uh, we read in Romans, the 15th chapter, we read a word over here in, in verse uh, 4, and it says, Whatsoever things were written before were written for our le learning, that we might through comfort and, and, uh, and patience of the Scriptures find hope. And so all the things that were written in this Bible were written for our learning. And so that means that you can read it and speak it because it's truth. Speak it. Believe it and say it, and it becomes yours. When the Bible says that we have been redeemed by his blood, then we're his. Jesus said, If any man come to me, I, he will, I, will, I will not cast him out. That means the Lord will never cast you out. Jesus said that those that are in me are safe because they're in my hands, and none shall pluck them from me. And my hand is in the Father's hand, and none shall pluck them from him. So that means you're safe forever, dear Christian. You're God. You're on your way home. Nothing is going to de de defeat you. Nothing is going to cause you to, to turn from that way. You're on your way home. And God is your God. And the Lord is your strength. And the hope of heaven is your joy. So go on in a time of trouble. Praise God and know that God is there to bless you and help you. Go on because God goes with you. Go on because God cares and He loves you. Go on because He's there waiting for you right now and He's waiting to, to bless you and give you strength that you don't have. Begin to say it. I belong to God. I am a child of the King. I belong to Him and I'm redeemed. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You shall have what you say. Speak it out and mold that it's truth because it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. And when God speaks to you, you speak to others and tell others what great things the Lord has done. Great things. God will do great things. Oh, He will do great things when we believe and when we speak. When we speak. Years ago, years ago, uh, there was in uh, there was in there was in a uh, uh, time of, of need. There was a. There was in Charlotte, North Carolina. They had a revival coming up with a preacher named Mordecai Ham was going to preach. And uh, some of the church members got together the, in the week before the meeting started. And they prayed and they said, Lord, give us oh, a, a great revival. Raise up somebody in this revival that will be able to spread the news and preach the word and teach the truth and, and through the years. But give us a revival. Give us somebody, raise up somebody that will become a great preacher for the glory of God. And they begin to believe it and begin to speak it and they begin to say it. We're going to have a revival. God's going to save somebody. In that revival meeting in Charlotte, North Carolina, a young teenage boy was saved and, and his name was Billy Graham. Billy Graham was saved in that meeting and God called him to preach. And he began to preach, and he began to preach, and for many, many years, he'd been preaching to millions of people all over the world. Hallelujah. God heard the prayer. God raised up someone to preach, and he'll do it. You shall have what you say. Believe. Trust God. And your words will become, oh, they'll become sweet like the honeycomb and health to your bones. May God bless you, dear friend. Put your trust in Jesus and live forever, and remember to speak pleasant words for the glory of God. Amen.